Welcome to another Garden Walk Ball Blog Video Diary. It's 14th of July and it's cool and moist here and it's a funny old world because I see on the news and the reports of the southern Europe, Spain, Italy and some of these parts in Greece roasting up in record heat waves of over 50 degrees. If I can see what we're getting here, 14.5 that's a bit extreme, but it's not very warm here, so yeah, 14.5 is the ambient temperature, so and, and it's there's moisture in the air, it's, it's almost drizzling. And I would much rather have this. In all the years, 40 odd years that we've been gardening, we've been used to these cooler moisture conditions. And so the range of plants we grow have, have been selected to be plants that, in, that will tolerate and enjoy those conditions. But with the changing weather, if we were starting out our garden again, career again, or garden life now, I suspect it would be a different range of plants we would have to grow. Because we've already seen some of those beautiful Himalayan plants that we like to grow disappearing. And getting aim, getting pushed beyond their tolerance. But this, what we grow in the garden is a range of these plants, but we also like to grow the plants that attract the wildlife. And just as I zoomed in there, the, the birds, the masses that are usually there just slowly disappeared from the, the feeder. But yeah, I'm sure you'll hear them, but we, we do encourage plants that seed around, that provide pollen for the insects and seed for the birds. So, and that's all part of the cycle of life that we expect in a garden. So I'm quite happy to have things like the, these aconites that self-seed. And the digitalis, we'll see plenty of them. They're all over the garden. And even, we're even happy with the the field weed, the, the sort of weed you wouldn't want in your field if you were a livestock farmer. Uh, a wild tansy, so a senecio. But it's one of the plants that um, is, attracts the widest range of pollinators. It's a very valuable pollinator plant. The blue leaves are a thalictrum. There is a range in amongst the aracema leaves. You will see there's some. I've missed the, the peak of the flowering of the wee Roscoia. Roscoia purpurea and Roscoia alpina over the. We might get round to that. I don't know if there's flowers left on that. And the Aracemas have gone over, but it's. The garden with ferns. And the digitalis. Digitalis purpurea, of course. And it just it comes in a range of colours, from white to purple. And, it, and it's much loved by the bees. And we've got this wee form here, which has stayed very compact. It's just a seedling. And I'm not sure if this multiple stemmed shorter flower plant is very attractive actually. And if this is caused by some physiological harm to the plant at an early stage or if it's genetic, but I, I will take seed from that and grow that on to watch it and see if it repeats that, because if it becomes a, a genetic strain then that would be really interesting. Pots here, just I'm always collecting seed in that. Pots here of, a, of, of a nice, some of the nice silenes I've found out in my walks. Just wild plants, just germinating. I'm not sure of this. You might just spot them, just little green, the very first germination. They were only sown about a week or ten days ago. So they're germinating now. And then other plants we're happy to grow for the pollinators are the, the Linaria. Again, Linaria purpurea is a specific name, but again it comes in a range of colours all the way through to from palest pink, almost white. I've never seen a pure white one, but I'm sure they must exist. But they seed around, and where they grow in the right place, we're happy to 
leave them. There we've got the herbs seeding around as well, a marjoram. And down here, a lovely wee clump of prunella. Again considered a weed by many people, but here it's grown up the edge of a trough. It grows in the gravel and it grows in the slabs, in between, in the cracks, and makes a lovely nice little plant, much favoured again by the, the pollinators and insects. Come here another sedum. Of course there, every flower at this time of year is important because compared to early in the spring this is quite a, a quiet time in the garden for, for flowers I suppose. So as we walk around you'll see it's much the same as everything. There's plenty of greenery. The plant we knew is Mechanopsis cambrica now. Papaver cambricum. And here down here is a little a little wild strawberry. The wee alpine strawberries. They seed around and they're very tasty. So it's very much a case of the plants rule in this garden and they put themselves where they want and we we have to referee it a bit and manage where we might let them grow or the decision the plant's in the wrong place so we have to move it or it's a plant that's going to dominate and outgrow some of the other plants we've got there so we, we want good neighbours not not the big thugs that might push out or eradicate other plants that grow around them. So just a wee fever few and the wild poppies. Without these the garden would be very very boring and almost barren at this time of year instead of the garden full of bees, insects, birds and mice. The wee geranium, Robertianum, this is a lovely white form that comes through from seed. It just seeds around gently and the birds love it. They eat the seeds. The bullfinches and the, the goldfinches and the sparrows, they all come down and peck away the seeds. And I'm quite sure we don't have quite so many this year since the birds found them. These are the other, the no flowers at the moment. The Mechanoti papaver somniferum, the, the, the opium poppy. They're just in, in seed pods at the moment. The flowers barely last a day. And it's interesting here because we had a big area of them and I scattered the seeds all around. But the only place they've grown are in these raised beds. The crevice beds where the seeds drop down in the crack in the crevice and I reckon the reason for that is that they're so tasty to the birds that wherever they can get at them they've eaten the seeds that I scattered. So I'll have to pay more attention to where I sow the seeds to, to put some of them out of reach of the wee birds so that we get build back the population again. It's no surprise they like the seeds because of course we use the seeds as well and on our bread and in, in recipes. Up here there's a, there's a nice little of the little white geranium there growing with a wild alcamilla and a nice little wild potentilla both of which I c collected cuttings of from the, the seaside just a couple of miles down the hill there times of different kind, they're good. Another good pl um, pollinating plant is the scab wild, uh, various forms of scabious. But you can see how jungly it is. 
some of it will start to collapse. When all these aconites stop flowering and before they start seeding too much, I will cut them back and start to open up the ground for the in preparation for the in August and into September when the autumn bulbs start to come up. And of course the, underneath all this jungle the bulbs are resting. The Campanula persicifolia white forms, the violety purple forms, there's anemones, just a jungle. Over there geraniums. The Mechanopsis have been very stunted this year because of the early drought. I'll have to hack in and get this back but you can see here the the start from the the drier period before the, the rains came and refreshed everything again. The ground was drying up and the decentras and some of the plants were going into premature. Going back prematurely but then the rains came and refreshed them and some of them have perked up. But all these will go soon. A lovely seed head on the frittle area, that's Camchatensis. The seed also forming on all the Mechanopsis. And, well not all of them because some of them didn't like the weather when they were in flower. Let's see a wee wild oxide daisy. I love these and I've been introducing them and in growing seed and I'm, I want a lot more of them because they will the thing about these plants the digitalis the leucanthemums, the oxide daisies the, the plants that volunteer so freely I hesitate to use the word weeds but many people call weeds as They've evolved so well and they are so successful because they have a wide tolerance. They can grow in a wide range of conditions. They can take a degree of drought and they can take some heat. They can also survive well and grow in the cool. So it really is just jungly. It's a lovely jungle. Well, I think it's a lovely jungle. The Campanula persicifolia. The Doronicum I showed last time is it's flowered finished, it's seeding and again I've gathered a bit of seed, I've scattered the seed around and I've gathered some to sow in a pot to build up. There's more of the the white daisies coming down there. Here's a, one of the gentiana asclepata, uh, uh, the, the, one of the summer flowering gentians, I've lost the name at the moment, it's stuck in my memory, it won't come out. But it just is the, if we hadn't, after my last video, I was complaining about the heat and the dry. Not long after that, the rains came and we got the more familiar, cooler, moister weather. And it just came in time to refresh the garden and, and keep plants going. And they look so much better now. They're so, growing so much better and, and it's good. And I, I see here. Um, oh god, the name's gone but it's bicolour. The name will come back in a minute. As you get older you know, sometimes names stick. I should know this plant. But I see a little fern in the background there. And that's just giving me the time to remember this Eucomus. 
of course it's Eucomus bicolor. With these lovely spotted leaves, it's just coming up now and it'll it'll flower later into August, September. It'll keep going, the flower will keep going. But lovely little ferns and bigger ferns. But there's so much growth. But at this time of year, it is those wild plants, the wild hawkweeds, the digitalis, over there the linaria, the mechanopsis cambricum or papaver cambricum, whatever we should call it nowadays, the bigger campanulus, scattered with some of the Himalayan alliums that flower later. <clears throat> we shouldn't just look for the flowers. We can see in the wilderness there's so much beauty in just the green and the foliage. And these commoner plants, perfectly at home, growing alongside the rarer ones. There's the digitalis big plants coming that will be next year's flowers. As many of them are biannuals, so they, they grow and produce a big rosette one year and the next year they flower and then they die off. But they don't all die off if you cut them back, because we cut the stems back. They produce a mass of seed, we don't want every single seedling. So we cut them back and allow a few seeds. So in that way we do, to a degree, I won't say control, but referee how many we get. But you can see how wild and woolly the garden is. There's still signs of what's to come. We've got here the more allium. This is allium wallichi, a lot of it. Seeding around here into the path. Where some months ago we had the crocus and then the erythroniums, as you can see the seed pods. So we had all the early cro spring crocus and everything, and then as we go into August, September we'll get the, the autumn crocus and the colchicums as well, and the later flowering alliums. They'll all start to appear. So I think I've gone on for long enough for this walk. It just gives you an idea of the garden at this time of year. It's going quiet. It'll become, in the next month or so, it, it'll cut down. One of my tasks will be to get in and cut the hedges, which are looking very woolly at the moment. So in the next few weeks, pardon me, next few weeks the hedges will get cut. And I'll trim back some of the, the trees and the shrubs and prepare the garden for the autumn burst, late summer and autumn burst. So thank you very much for watching again. I appreciate your comments and your support and I'll leave you with a view of the, one of those very common plants that we should welcome into the garden and allow at least an area where it can grow and feed the pollinators. So thanks very much. I'll see you next time.